Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo. On Sunday, December the 8th, the PV Juniors will be holding their annual charity event at the PV Golf Club. Now, we had a chance today to visit with Community's Child, one of the charities the PV Juniors donate to. Um, Community's Child, uh, we've been here since uh, 2008, the shelter. We have several programs, but our transitional shelter, which is called Building Hope, has been here um, for five years. We have women that come from several different backgrounds. Um, the women come here not just because they're homeless, but, you know, they um, suffer from abandonment issues, from life trauma experiences. And so while they're here, we try our best to help them with a lot of supportive services. They get one-on-one -on -one counseling. They get um, process processing, counseling through groups. They get um, counseling for their children. We help them while they go to school. Um, we um, require that they're in school full time um, to be here. And so while they're here, they're able to gain the skills so that when they leave that they're self-sufficient. Um, we also have additional programs, um, but the, the main program is our shelter program. Yes. Okay, and then you said that you're, you have other programs. What, what other kind of things um, are, do they do so they get ready to go back out into the world? Um, we have um, job skills. Um, uh, there's a pre-vocational class that we offer. It's about 16 hours and while they're in there they're learning to identify their skills. They're learning um, to do their resumes. They're learning. Uh, they do mock interviewing and so um, there's uh, we also help them with a career clothing Great. and we offer a career closet to the community as well. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's uh, looking to uh, go on an interview, they're more than welcome to come to us for clothing. Great. So I, I guess you take donations for that as well. Yes, all the time. Right. That's great. <laughs> yes. Now, now tell me, if, if some, somebody needs to come here, what is the criteria for coming to Community Child? They have to be over 18 years old, and they have to have a child that's under the age of 12 months. Okay. Um, they also have to be uh, single. They cannot be in a relationship during the time that they're here okay. so that they can focus on their children, mm -hmm. on um, developing themselves, and on school. And um, they also have to be referred to us through another agency. Okay. Yes. And if for you, what what is a day like for you here? What, what does your day consist of? Wow. Um, no two days are the same. Right. Every day is different. Um, some days um, the children are here because they're homesick. Um, there's days where um, we get donations um, dropping in throughout the day. Uh, we get visitors that come by, um, potential um, donors that just want to take a look around, um, getting ready for our upcoming programs. Uh, there's just so many different things um, that take place in a day. I, I, don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> yeah. you, you and I were talking a little bit. This house was actually built from the ground up. Talk about that. Um, the house was a small little house that was owned by a nearby church. And so our executive director, Tara, she um, got the house, purchased it from the church. And then they she got together with the contractor who also had a vision to help women and children. And so they designed this big, huge four bedroom home um, there are, I believe, four bathrooms here. Um, it's a double car garage. It's really large. And so they designed it, they built it, and it opened in 2005. No, 2008. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. That's, that's but pretty, yeah, go yeah. Ahead. It took three years to get it going. Um, I, they started the nonprofit in 05, and by 08, it opened. But we have several um, foundations, several charities, several service groups that support us, um, not just financially, but with uh, material donations, right. with volunteer hours. Um, they, uh, we get a lot of uh, the, the teen groups that want to come, and they babysit for us, right. the children. Yes. So they get a little experience, too. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Dolores gave us a tour inside of Community's Child. This is um, our community food pantry, which is for all the residents. Um, before they go grocery shopping, we encourage them to check the pantry um, to get any groceries out of here. They're welcome to come in and out of this as needed um, to get their groceries. And then um, whatever we don't have, they'll go and they'll buy their own groceries. Here we have the washer and dryer and also a schedule. Um, each resident gets their own day to wash their clothing. And um, they can wash um, during the regular day hours um, from the time that they get up until curfew time in the evening. And this is our donation center. This is where we receive all donations and also where we stock all of our cleaning supplies, 
necessities that the women and children need, diapers, wipes. So when somebody makes a donation to us, we have them um, meet us here at the garage. We open our garage doors and the donations come in through here. We have our staff, which are our house managers in the evening that sort through them and put them all away for us. Here's an example of one of our donations. Um, somebody did a school drive um, for us. And so they brought um, all these backpacks and all of these school supplies. We have two exercise machines for our residents. So whenever they feel like working out and getting some exercise, um, it is one of the requirements here that they exercise at least once a week. And so they're able to come in here and use the equipment and get their, um, their physical fitness. We also have an overflow of some of the extra supplies that we have here. Um, we have um, our alumni residents. Once they graduate our program, we continue to support them. And so if they need anything, they're more than welcome to come back to us and we help them out with laundry soap and um, toilet paper and um, hand towels and diapers, anything else that they need. We have three refrigerators in our house because we can have up to six residents. And so um, two of the refrigerators are in the kitchen for four residents to share. And this is the third refrigerator for two residents to share. And um, this is where we keep all of our um, strollers and all of our car seats for the women and children in the house. So whenever they need to go somewhere, they come here and they pull them out. And when they're back, they put them back up here. When I come in in the morning, I come here um, and I check to see who's home, who's gone, um, what's going on, what is the residence routine. Um, it'll let us know if the children um, are homesick, if they went to school. It lets us know if the residents went to work or school, um, if they're going to go somewhere after work or school, um, and lets us know what time to expect them back. So if we need them at any time during the day, we know when they're coming back. Up the stairs is our staff quarters. We have our office. We have our staff um, restroom and also visitor's restroom. We have a bedroom up there for our house manager when she's on duty. And we also have a computer center for our residents to use the computer and have access to a printer and the internet and a fax. Here at the top of our stairs, we have um, our house manager's room. We have house managers that come in at the end of the day when our office closes, and they're here overnight until the morning when our office opens back up. They're here for any needs that the women might have. They're here to oversee any volunteers that come in the evening during babysitting hours while women are in group sessions. So here we have our video library um, for the residents. Um, if they need a movie for their children to watch downstairs in the living room, they can come up here and check them out. We also have some emergency kits that we have put together that go alongside every bed in the house. Um, right now, we are going to be having an emergency class for the residents, and they'll be getting their, um, their emergency kit. Throughout our entire house, we have safety um, gates for the children. Um, upstairs here, we have one so that the children, if the moms are up here working on the computers, um, where we have a computer station for them, um, we want to make sure that the children don't get out and fall down the stairs. Um, at the bottom of the stairs, we have additional gates, which are permanent um, wooden half gates um, with safety locks so that they can't come in and out as well or fall down the stairs. Um, this is a multi-purpose room, I guess, because we have the computers, the printer. Um, we also have our staff kitchenette and our staff refrigerator. And we have some books here um, if any of the moms want to read to their children or um, some parenting books, um, any books that they might need to help them to get through while they're here. And this is our office area where um, three of us share one large office. Um, this is Terry, our um, accountant. And uh, Terry, because of our lack of space, this is her little <laughs> desk area. This table also serves as, um, in the evening, this is where the moms come up for um, their group counseling. This is also where they come up for their parenting classes, domestic violence classes, um, their job preparedness classes. Um, any classes that we offer here will be held up here in this, this office. Um, this is my desk over here. And then um, this is where we have our volunteers and our interns come in and they need a work area. This is their desk. And then right over here is where our um, executive director, Tara Nierenhausen, sits. And this is where she writes all of her grants from and um, where she is here designing new programs to help the women and the children that we serve here in the community.
those are actual art pieces that some of the children that we serve here in the community have done. Um, the top one up there, um, we had an art contest and that was the winning um, art piece. And we featured it at um, our last fall fundraiser and it actually sold for um, a few hundred dollars and the person who purchased it gave it back to Tara as a gift. We love to put up some of the work that the children do. And right up here at one of our Thanksgiving events, we had all the children, about 200 different children, color these um, thanks signs. And they colored them, and they wrote their names on them. And then we sent them out to our sponsors and to our funders, um, people who help us and support us. This is a little information center. Um, whenever we get visitors and they always come upstairs um, to meet with us in the office, we have information here about upcoming programs. We have our brochures. Um, we have our business cards. Um, we also keep track of our statistics here um, for all of the women and children um, that we serve through our shelter, through our food pantry, through our outreach programs for children in the community. Um, it gives you the whole total of numbers of volunteers and people served. Right here is our children's area. We have, um, this is a chalkboard here, so the children are able to write all over it instead of writing on our walls. <laughs> um, we've actually put this up so that they could write here. Um, we have a play area for them, um, toys, books, um, anything that they need to keep them entertained um, while they're here. Um, we have walkers. Um, we also have in this corner over here a playpen for the smaller babies. TV rules are that TV is for children. And so they can watch either the, um, the children's uh, movies or they have to watch educational programs for children. Uh, after 5 p.m., the residents are allowed to watch TV, um, but it has to all be G-rated. So this is our kitchen area. Um, all of our residents um, receive pantries um, that are below the counters um, for their groceries and they're all safety locked. Our residents cook for themselves. Um, they're only required to have one group meal a week, which is held every Monday. And on Monday, we have a um, house meeting with our residents and with our children. And during that time, we just go over different issues for the house, different things that come up during the week, their concerns. Um, we also acknowledge their accomplishments. And if there's a birthday that month, we celebrate birthdays. Um, and then following that meeting, we, this is the only time where we have, um, they're required to have a group meal with staff. And so we actually sit around this whole island here while the uh, mother that's cooking for that week, they rotate cooking um, every week. So whoever's cooking is a part of that meeting while they're cooking here. And um, this is where all that goes on. We have three refrigerators. These are the other two refrigerators here um, where two moms share each refrigerator. We also post up the chores for the week. Um, every week we change chores. They're all required to have their chores done by 9 a.m. and they initial off once they do them. Um, also floors get done daily and they also initial off when they do the floors. We also give them a monthly calendar just to let them know what to expect for the month. And um, we post a calendar here and we give each resident um, their own calendar for their rooms. Um, so this is one of our bedrooms. Um, this room is for two mothers with one um, child, a child under the age of 12 months. And it is also the only bedroom in the whole house that has its own bathroom within the bedroom. And so this is our backyard. We have a really nice playground for the kids to play in. Um, we have uh, the, the walls have been painted um, to make it very friendly and fun for the children. Um, we also have a storage bin back here, a shed, where we also keep additional donations that come in. Right here is where we have um, the bicycles for the children and the little ride-on toys for the toddlers um, and a ball um, so that they can um, play out here or um, if their parents want to take them into the parking lot out back and supervise them, they can go out there and ride their bikes. The PV Juniors Women's Group raises money to support women and children in crisis in the South Bay. What we do, we are a fundraising group that has been 
at the Hill for over 56 years. So um, long sustainable uh, group of women who have raised money for women and children in crisis. So our main focus is really to help our community. So every um, organization we support is actually in the South Bay. So we're raising money in the South Bay for the South Bay and for the women and children in crisis who need it. You have a big event coming up. Tell us about that. We have a our wonderful uh, holiday luncheon. And what we do every year is we do a boutique and it's a luncheon where moms, daughters, sisters come together and they shop a little bit and we raise some funds for our philanthropies. It's um, very nice. It's at the PV Country Club. And we... Um, just love to have all of our community participate. It's uh, this year's theme is Winter Wonderland, so it's going to be fabulous. With uh, PV Juniors, uh, like I said earlier, we've been around 56 years, and women come in and participate and stay participating in the uh, club for quite a long time. Uh, it's interesting, especially with uh, the whole economic downturn and so forth, you would expect that you would have less participation. Although many of our members are currently working women, they have their full-time jobs, they have their full-time family jobs, they still have time to really participate full-time in PV Juniors. We have no paid positions, it's all volunteer, and I estimate that we put probably thousands of thousands of man hours probably close to 10 to 12,000 man hours per year to do two of our fundraising events plus all the other things that we do to help our community with including doing drives for our philanthropies and we do some hands-on events so it's very much about women helping women many women in crisis have no place to call home we had a chance to meet Elena, who's putting her life and the lives of her children back together here with the help of Community's Child. Basically, I was um, a little stuck in um, a situation, and um, I was suffering from trauma from past relationship and then ending pretty much by myself. Um, I drove across country to find my daughter that was taken away from me, like my oldest, and ended up um, pregnant with the twins, and he didn't want to be in the picture. So um, got on the train, came back to California, and um, pretty much started calling all shelters, anything that I can find, even just a couch to lay on. And Community's Child opened their doors, and they like seen me when I was pregnant. Um, they pretty much like made sure that I was okay when I was ready to move and did all like um, to make sure that I was a fit for the house. I um, uh, talked to the other residents, made sure we had things in common, that this was going to work for me, that I felt comfortable around the other people in the house. And I did and I moved in like within a few days and just getting here the being received and having all the support not only from the staff but from the residents too and not have to worry about like diapers or wipes or um, having actually a support group to talk to like a counselor um, classes parenting CPR all those types of things so I'm really grateful to be here Community's Child gave me the chance to step down and kind of focus more on my recovery and um, focus more in the in my long-term dreams which is going back to school so right now I'm just working from home and I actually it's like my first week and Great. just happy to you know start looking forward to starting the semester in January to finish my degree so I, I was gonna ask you what is your long-term goal what, what do you want to do um, I well sometime within like the next five years um, I want to have my own design firm so I'm working on my bachelor's degree for web and graphics since the PV juniors are approached by so many worthwhile charities they have assembled a philanthropy committee to handle all of the requests Wow. Well, I'm happy to say that I'm one of 18 of our committee, and our committee is the Philanthropy Investigating Committee for the PV Juniors. And it 
pretty much it's a year long process, investigation process that starts in May, mm -hmm. where our philanthropies will apply um, and submit their primary applications. And once we look at that and make sure they fulfill three criteria, basic criteria, that they're not a nonprofit organization mm -hmm. and that their focus are um, women and children. Okay. And there are um, the, the facility that they are requesting a grant for resides in the South Bay. Once that's done, then we submit, we then tell them that they're eligible for a secondary application. Once that process is done, then we collect the applications and distribute them to our um, committee members. Okay. So each committee member will be able to um, choose which philanthropy they would like to look at. In order to do that, though, we have a, quite a, um, a rigorous uh, financial process that we go through. And so we have a financial advisor that looks at every application to make sure that um, we are looking at an organization that um, our dollars are best served. Right. So that when we um, give them money, it's um, something that will um, best serve the people that they're helping. Communities Child and other organizations is what it's why we do what we do. Um, it's a great organization where they help individuals and they're able to um, really apply funds and um, with a specific purpose of helping and creating hope. What does it mean to you to be able to come to a place like Communities Child and see the great work that you are assisting with? It's um, it pulls on our heartstrings and it to me it's what it's all about. It you see that we're able to help women become fully self-sufficient and that we, although we work all these hours to do, to raise funds because it's not easy to raise funds, when we see that our funds are being utilized to the good and to the long-term goodness of our community, it's amazing. It's a place to be safe, a place to call home, a place that changes lives. So we're all really, really close, and um, we all come from a pretty like hard background. And we come together, and we see each other as a family. We take care of each other. So that's like one of the most important things that I feel while I'm here, and I love being here. Yeah. Um, we have a former resident named Monique who came to us um, with a, a small little boy with special needs and um, she completed her studies at El Camino um, Legal Studies and she just completed her first year now at um, Berkeley Law. So we're so proud of her. She came to us hopeless but we're proud to say that now she's very hopeful. And remember, the event will be at the PV Golf Club on Sunday, December the 8th from 10 to 4. And that will do it for us. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we'll see you next time.